If you clicked on this video, then you probably have no freaking idea what a capture card is or even does. But hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to understand what a capture card is, what it does, how to use it, and whether or not you actually freaking need one. And I'll dumb this down so even your little annoying cousin at your family party that always asks to go on your phone to play games in the other room will be able to understand and tell you what the heck a capture card does and is. So if that sounds good to you, then drop a quick like on this video so other people can find this video. And let's jump into the exciting world of capture cards cards, yay. So what the heck even is a capture card like this? Well, let's just talk about it. So I've got my handy dandy graph up here, which I stole from the internet, but all a capture card essentially does is connect your console to your computer, so that way you can send your gameplay footage to your computer, so that way you can stream or record it through the PC while also sending the footage to your TV for most capture cards. I'll go over the differences in a minute, but for most capture cards, you'll also have this, which is called pass-through. Essentially, all it is, it just allows you to play your console footage and it just automatically passes through the capture card directly to your TV, so you can play your console games just like normal. And then the capture card also sends that footage to your computer as well, so you essentially have two signals. And for all those old school gamers out there, you can definitely connect your old school AV cable, so the red, yellow, and white cables to these capture cards, but you're gonna need an adapter like this one because you'll be able to plug those old school connections into here and then it'll output an HDMI signal, which you will then put into the capture cards. Because most capture cards these days use HDMI. So basically when someone's like, oh man, I need a capture card. Basically what they want to do is take their console gameplay and send it over to their computer and TV, but sometimes just the computer just to get the signal. So that way they can use a program like OBS Studio or Streamlabs to be able to get that footage and then stream it over to Twitch, YouTube, Kick, wherever, or record their gameplay through their computer or whatever they want to do. They essentially just want to connect their console gameplay to their computer, which means if you're getting a capture card and you don't have a computer, then you pretty much don't need one because the capture card doesn't do anything else other than that. So now that we kind of have an idea of what a capture card actually does, well, there's a ton of different capture cards to actually look at and they have differences. So let's take a quick look at some of the different options out there. So if we go on our lovely addiction Amazon, you can see that if we just type in capture card, we got a couple different options here and they vary by price quite heavily. So if you guys have heard of Elgato, they're pretty much the golden standard of capture cards, but they also cost the most. I'm using an Elgato one right here. It's an older model because I got it a couple years ago. But if we just look at the capture cards themselves, we'll be able to see a couple differences. So we have this one, which is about 180, but right now it's on sale for 135, which honestly is a good deal. But then we look below it and it's like, well, Cody, this one's only 30 three dollars why would i spend an extra hundred dollars when i can just get this one and that's where the capture cards really start to differ so if we look at the expensive capture card one of the things that they offer is let me zoom in is this thing called instant game view which essentially is going to give you an instantaneous signal to your computer so when you're recording in obs studio or streamlabs or whatever video software you have on your computer it's going to be pretty much a no delay whatsoever of of that footage from when you're playing it to the actual computer and people seeing it. Sometimes if you go for these cheaper models, then they won't have instant game view and you will have a noticeable delay or lag. So let's say if you're playing, you know, Call of Duty and you kill someone, sometimes that footage won't actually show up on your computer for like a second or two after, which will lead to problems when you're streaming or recording because the delay will mess up that and your viewers gonna be like, well, I didn't see what the heck just happened. Oh, I just saw it now. Now that won't happen with every capture card, but that's where the golden advice is always look at the reviews. So if you click on, let's say this one, you're going to go and just read the description, see if anybody complains about having any lag. It does say real time preview. So it is possible that this one specifically does not have lag, but most importantly, what you can do is go to the ratings and just see what people are saying. So it seems like this one has pretty good reviews. I should probably buy one and do a review on it just to see what the hype is about. But really the best thing you can do is just see what other people are talking about because because if they had a problem, then I'm sure they're gonna bitch about it here in the comments. But if we continue to scroll down, you'll notice that there's also a $10 capture card. However, if you notice, there's a lot of things missing here. It only has one input and an output. 
So that means you're not gonna be able to connect this to your TV. This is literally just connecting your Xbox or whatever directly to your computer or laptop. So that means you're not gonna be able to play on your TV. And if there is a lag, then your movements are not gonna be accurately displayed on your computer because it's not that instant game view feature. So there'll probably be input delay and latency. But once again, read the reviews because all these are changing constantly. And I just want you guys to make sure that you know what you're getting into. Also, another thing to be aware of is you see that there's a little mic jack and a little headphone jack so some of you guys are probably wondering well can I record my party chat can I record my game chat and that's where things get a little bit confusing and a pain in the butt and so a lot of the times if you want to record your party chat what you'll need is an additional thing called I believe the chat link cable and so this is also by Elgato but this will allow you to connect your voice chat and your microphone and all that directly into the capture card so that way it's able to pick up all those signals the setup process can be a little bit confusing, and that's why ultimately I always recommend that people go with the Elgato capture cards. They do cost more, but I do believe you get what you pay for. I'm not sponsored by Elgato in any way, shape, or form as of recording this video, but Elgato, my DMs are open if you do want to get in touch with me because I do love your capture cards, so holler at your boy. But honestly, the reason why I like Elgato capture cards the best is that they're pretty much the golden standard, so if you have any questions whatsoever, someone already has a video on it on YouTube. YouTube on setup but even more importantly if you go to their website you can see they have so many different guides here including the minimum system requirements which is also another thing I wanted to talk about because if you have a capture card you're going to need a certain computer to be able to run that in terms of making sure that you have a high enough CPU a good enough GPU aka graphics card enough RAM all of that stuff because you're sending the gameplay to your computer you're not going to be able to use your toaster that you had 10 years ago you're going to need something Thing to be able to run everything smoothly without any lag or problems. So I'll make sure to leave all of these things linked in the description, by the way. So if you want to read through this and just make sure that your computer or laptop will be able to even run having a capture card and the gameplay, this will be very important to you. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever, I'll also leave a little contact us for Elgato because they'll be able to answer all of your capture card related questions much better than I can because they made the damn things. So just make sure that your computers are even good enough to run a capture card. But there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're using a capture card. So something stupid that happens a lot of the times for whatever reason is supported resolutions. Like if you're playing on a 4K monitor, sometimes you might get an error. If you have a PlayStation 5, we'll go to the PlayStation 5 setup. They have this very easy, nice guide, literally step-by-step -step on what you need to do in order to actually use the capture card like properly. And you'll notice that one of the things that you have to do is disable the HDCP setting. In order to send the signal from your PlayStation to your computer, you need to go in to your settings of the PlayStation 5 and disable HDCP. Now, it's not a hard thing to do, but you would never know to do that before just buying it out of the box. So that's why I recommend going with the Elgato ones because they have all of these questions answered and all of these guides specifically for their products. So you'll be able to basically get coaching from them on how to actually get everything up and running without any headaches. Because if you go with one of the no-name brands from Amazon, you literally don't have any life support or anything for troubleshooting. So you're kind of on your own. Now, that's personally why I would go and spend the extra money for the Elgato, but ultimately it's up to you and your decision and what you think is going to be best for you. So since I'm lazy and I already have the footage that I made for a YouTube short, I'm just going to show you guys how to actually use one of these capture cards. So I'll just kind of narrate over the short. I know this is kind of trashy, but hey, it's efficient for me. So all we did was take our console, which happens to be a 360 here. We take that HDMI cord and then we plug it to the HDMI in of the capture card. So that way we can send the signal to the capture card. Then we take another HDMI cable from the HDMI out of the capture card and put it into our TV. So that way it's gonna send the signal to our TV so we can just play it like we normally would. Then we're gonna take this USB cord that came with the capture card. This part's very important. Sometimes people take this cord and they'll switch it out with a longer USB cord and then the signal won't come through. Now I'm guilty of this myself. I wasted like an hour of my time because I had no idea that that was even a thing. So make sure to use the cord that they provide with the capture card and plug that directly into your computer because otherwise you might get an error. So we plug that USB from the capture card into the computer. Then we turn on our console, okay? Then we turn on the TV. And so we wait 
Now we have that pass through going to our TV that I mentioned earlier because the console footage is passing through to our TV so we can play it just how we normally would. And then this is where we're going to go into our streaming software like OBS Studio, Streamlabs, or whatever recording software you want to use. And so this is specifically for OBS Studio. If you've never used OBS Studio before anything, I have hundreds of videos on my channel. You can go through the playlist. There's so many things step-by-step step for you here, but essentially all you would do is go into your recording software, in this case, OBS Studio. We're adding a video capture device source, which is just basically how we're going to import our gaming signal footage to our computer here. So we're just gonna go and find the capture card listed from there. And then we're gonna hit okay after it's done loading. And as you can see here, our footage is now on our TV and on our computer so that way we can stream it, we can record it with all of the fun alerts and everything through our computer. So that's pretty much the basic setup. Now, obviously, if you're using a different recording software, the process might be a little different, but like I said, hundreds of tutorials on the channel right here for you guys whenever you're ready. Now, I know this was a lot to digest, but hopefully now you should know whether or not you actually need a capture card for your specific situation. And if you're ready to dive into streaming and recording, then you can watch this playlist to the side of me where I hold your hand step by step for everything you need in order to start streaming. But my name is Cody and I will see you in the next one.